It feels like there's a conversation about vaccines that's not currently being had. And I'm very curious as to why. Looking into the subject, there's really only two avenues about the vaccine. Get it or don't. On each side of the spectrum, there's usually only a few arguments for why one should or should not get it. Most of the others are just plays on the central feud dialogues. The intention of this video is not to suggest that you should or shouldn't get the vaccine. I believe this is a decision you have to make for yourself. And I'd like to invite you to flow with me here, no matter how you feel about the subject. Try and play with all of this information and notice your reactions. In this way, along with being receptive, you'll be able to make the best decision for yourself. And before we really dive into it, if you are seeking a safe haven to discuss stuff like this without being criticized, insulted, demeaned, or otherwise, please come and visit Spirit Mysteries. For only a dollar a month, you can access a massive community of spiritual seekers, ask questions and share stories, all free of judgment or cruelty. I hope to see you there. And now on with the video. Now back in December of 2020, even before the vaccines had really started to roll out, I went to Rhythmia Life Advancement Center for the first time in about a year, which had just reopened after being shut down from COVID. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Rhythmia, they're the world's first medically licensed ayahuasca healing center. And you can learn more about them by watching our documentary about visiting them using the link in the description. The first night of ceremony, interestingly, the spirit of the medicine found it necessary to educate me a bit more about the nature of this virus and its effect on the world as well as the subject of vaccines. Regarding the virus itself, it was very affirmative to what we had already discussed in our previous COVID spirit science videos, which you can also watch on our channel. She explained that just as there's a physical virus, what it's reflecting for us as a species is our fear, which is a potent and dangerous virus because of how much faster it spreads and how much it affects your thoughts, feelings, and actions directly. Now, presently, we don't have a way of actually tracking fear per person in mass, but if we think about it logically for a moment, we know that there are about 8 billion people in the world, and there are 208 million COVID cases reported at the time of this video being written. But considering the global impact of COVID, the lockdowns and masks and everything, it's probably fair to say that there's well over 208 million people who are afraid of COVID or what's happening in the world to some degree. And even if you're not afraid of the virus itself, if you're afraid in some capacity about the vaccines or a global economic crisis, this still counts as fear that's related to or coming out of the pandemic. To suggest fear is a virus that spreads much quicker than the physical virus isn't far off. And there's a science to back this up. Fear increases your stress levels, which in turn releases cortisol into your body. It's literally considered the fear or stress hormone. In small levels, cortisol is very useful to our bodies. It's actually part of our natural biological rhythm, increasing in the morning to wake us up from sleep and get us moving and decreasing in the evening to help us wind down for the night. However, when fear ramps up, cortisol is released in much larger quantities and this has a detrimental effect on our immune system. It can also lead to depression, mental illness and lower life expectancy. The more you're feeling afraid, the more it creates a ripple effect throughout society. While this is true energetically, it's also true physically. As an article on Psychology Today clearly states, the ripple effect of a fearful, isolated, and stressed out society increases cortisol levels across the board for Americans of all ages. If you have a lot of fear and thus cortisol in your body, your immune system will be far more susceptible to breaking down and not being able to protect yourself from the different illnesses that you could contract, including but not limited to COVID-19. What's especially interesting here is that if someone is afraid of the virus and chooses the vaccine, and they're next to someone who is afraid of the vaccine and warns about it, both people here are afraid and both people are going to suffer the negative effects of too much cortisol in their bodies. Another very important thing here about the nature of fear is found in Frank Herbert's Dune when he writes, fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. You see, fear is something that limits our ability to create. It limits our ability to be free. When we're stuck in our fear, we limit our ability to see more possibilities. 
we're limited from feeling like we can do what we want in life and we consciously or subconsciously cut ourselves short. In doing so, we cut off our own vital essence because fear grabs you by the root chakra and stops you from expanding into the higher centers. We explain this to a much greater degree in our chakra videos, which you can also watch on our channel. With all of that out of the way, what the spirit of the medicine at Rhythmia explained was that right now, there's a lot of fear on both sides of the spectrum, fear of the virus and fear of the vaccines or big pharma's influence in the world or various conspiracies around the whole thing. As far as vaccines go, this fear most often comes from a lack of trust in the medical institutions, as the companies who have rushed to produce the vaccines in the past year have had notorious histories of healthcare lawsuits. If we take a look at some of the major vaccine companies right now, for example, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Johnson & Johnson, we find some interesting things. Don't get me wrong, Pfizer is a powerful company. It got its start more than 150 years ago and has come a long way, evolving from a one-stop shop to a multinational corporation. It certainly had many triumphs. It discovered citric acid and mass produces penicillin and vitamin C, helping millions every year. But over the years, the company has also faced lawsuits, including where consumers claimed the drug maker sold defective drugs. Even the US government has charged the company with healthcare fraud. Pfizer set the record for the largest healthcare fraud settlement and the largest criminal fine of any kind with $2.3 billion in 2009 to resolve criminal and civil liability coming from the illegal promotion of certain pharmaceutical products. Back in 2010, AstraZeneca too was forced to pay out $520 million to resolve allegations that they illegally marketed the antipsychotic drug Seroquel for uses not approved as safe and effective by the FDA. And let's be real, the pharma empire that is Johnson & Johnson is no stranger to hundreds of lawsuits over the years, having recalled numerous products and faced claims of their products being defective. Those lawsuits pointed to internal documents showing J&J &J and its subsidiaries knew about the problems with their products, but sold them anyways. In addition to individual product liability lawsuits though, Certain states in the US also says that J&J &J helped fuel the opioid crisis and are suing the company for millions of dollars. As of February, 2021, they're currently undergoing lawsuits for everything from their hip replacement tech that supposedly caused metal poisoning to the drug Zarelto that caused heavy bleeding. So it's no wonder people don't feel safe injecting themselves with the chemical soup when they don't even know what's inside it with many expressing that the production process just felt rushed. But here's what's interesting. In ceremony, what Mother Ayahuasca explained was that if you're so afraid for your life because you believe COVID will kill you, then it's actually better to get the vaccine because for that person, the vaccine will provide peace of heart and mind, reduce their cortisol levels, and thus they'll be able to be a more authentic creator and a clearer expression of their natural self. She also explained that if you're not afraid of the virus, and especially if you take really good care of your health, then you don't really need it and there's no need to force yourself to get it. Now, this is the part that might stir up some controversy because so many people have become bitter towards those who are in the opposite camp. From the mainstream thinking, what I'm telling you is irresponsible because the narrative is that everyone needs the vaccine, period, no questions asked. Despite the fact that with or without the vaccine, you can get COVID, pass it on to other people and die. Though it's worth mentioning that the purpose of the vaccine isn't to prevent you from getting COVID, but to stop severe symptoms to prevent the healthcare industry from getting overwhelmed and collapsing. Further, those who consider themselves anti-vax may hate this message I'm sharing today too, because to some, anyone who gets the vaccine is now part of Bill Gates' sleeper army or something like that. I find that it's best to let everyone be empowered with their own decision and not try and force your beliefs on others. Being natural and letting things flow as they do is going to be the way that we get through this and be open to receiving great wisdom from the experience. It may also be valuable to explore the perspective of the spiritually vaccinated. One of our staff members at Team Spirit has had both shots of the Pfizer vaccine and speaking to it, he said, initially I had some side effects like a normal flu, but my immune system flushed it out in about a day. Energetically speaking, it did feel like something was added into my field at first, but with basic energy work, I was easily able to isolate it and remove it with love and gentle movement. 
Now I feel totally back to normal and healthy as usual. And another member of our team had the J&J &J vaccine out of necessity in order to do some important traveling. And he said that it did feel as though after receiving the shot, there was an elevation into a new mental field, which may just be the collective consciousness of every vaccinated person. But in that way, he was able to relate better with people and continue to live his life in service. He also described that if there was any bad energies from the vaccine, his soul is still more powerful than any shot. And through energy work and perhaps support from plant medicine like ayahuasca, anything can be purged and healed, making him stronger than ever before. You see, there's a principle that comes from the Tao Te Ching, which says that if you want something to go away, you have to let it become bigger rather than fighting it and suppressing it. You have to let it expand because in this way, it will naturally wear itself out. This applies perfectly to both the virus, the vaccines and the mass fear are like a giant wave moving through us as a species. When you're getting crashed by a big tidal wave at an ocean beach, the worst thing you can do is fight it. And the best thing you can do is dive through it and let it pass by you. If you make fights with people who are in the opposite camp as you, you just create more stress and fear along with anger and frustration. This is because it's something that has a lot of emotional and energetic charge. And by releasing the charge from your own field, you release your own stress about it and life will just flow smoother. Vaccine or no vaccine, what benefit will come from forcing your decisions on others who might feel differently? What would it look like for you to live with the fullness of your own beliefs? I mean, seriously, would you rather be like Zuko at the beginning of Avatar or the end? In that, it's always best to take in as much information as you possibly can so that you can be properly informed and make the best possible decision. The biggest issue in the Vax conversation seems to be that people are either entirely on one side or the other. The solution then means really just taking the time to learn about the vaccines, the pros and the cons, what people are saying on both sides and taking mental notes of patterns that you're observing. For example, the media will often portray a lot of people who got sick and then changed their minds about getting the vaccine. But more often than not, these people were already obese or in poor health. While there are certainly rising cases in younger, healthier people, the general trend is that COVID amplifies issues that you already have with your health. And it's especially bad if you already have an older condition or are unhealthy. Personally, I haven't seen many examples of people who were already super healthy to begin with that the media made an example of. Then again, I've seen people who were anti-vax who had ridiculous levels of conspiracy ideas that were just a bit over the top and were not able to consider a more balanced approach or understanding. At the end of the day, this is a conversation about the different paradigms of human thought and human consciousness. It's about the different realities that we're choosing to live in along with fear and how we're choosing to take care of ourselves. To close this conversation, I wanna share with you something that Jerry Powell, the founder of Rhythmia posted on Instagram a while back. Marriage is hard, divorce is hard, choose your hard. Obesity is hard, being fit is hard, choose your hard. Being in debt is hard, being financially disciplined is hard, choose your hard. Communication is hard, not communicating is hard, choose your hard. Life will never be easy. It will always be hard, but we can choose our hard. Pick wisely. To add some more weight to this, in Dune, after that line I shared earlier, Frank Herbert wrote this about fear. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. If we're choosing to live in fear, we fully limit ourselves from being divine creators at the highest degree. It seems then as though this fear creates a split root chakra energy in the collective, creating a polarization between what people think is safe. In doing so, everyone has a different idea of what safety is. This deepens our individual and collective root chakra wounds, increasing fear and challenging all of us to evolve our consciousness or conform in mass. At the end of the day, your life is in your hands. Treat it sacred and be blessed.